three men get captured in the jungle by cannibals and are taken back to the big chief, who immediately gets out his penis and tells them that if their three penises together can match his, then they will be set free. Now the cannibal chief has a 20-inch manhood, so the first man gets his out and it measures 10 inches. The second man reveals his and it's eight inches. Only another two inches are needed, so the men are feeling quietly confident. When the third man drops his trousers and produces a pathetic example of manhood, however, it makes exactly two inches, so the men are set free. Later on back at camp, the first man says to his companions, it's a good thing mine was 10 inches. It's lucky mine was eight inches, says the second. The third one says, and it's a good thing I had an erection. <laughs> After a two-year study, the National Science Foundation announced the following results on America's ball-related recreational preferences. The sport of choice for unemployed or incarcerated people is basketball. The sport of choice for maintenance-level employees is bowling. The sport of choice for blue-collar workers is football. The sport of choice for supervisors is baseball. The sport of choice for middle management is tennis. The sport of choice for corporate officers is golf. Conclusion, the higher you rise in the corporate structure, the smaller your balls become. <laughs> Airman Jones was assigned to the induction center where he advised new recruits about their government benefits, especially their GI insurance. It wasn't long before Captain Smith noticed that Airman Jones had almost a 100% record for insurance sales, which had never happened before. Rather than ask about this, the captain stood in the back of the room and listened to Jones's sales pitch. Jones explained the basics of the GI insurance to the new recruits and then said, if you have GI insurance and go into battle and are killed, the government has to pay $200,000 to your beneficiaries. If you don't have GI insurance and you go into battle and get killed, the government only has to pay a maximum of $6,000. Now, he concluded, which bunch do you think they are going to send into battle first? <laughs> An army officer, a naval officer, and a ranger are captured by a strange tribe deep in the jungle. The people of the tribe confer briefly and then the chief walks up to the army officer. We've decided to kill you, he began, and make a canoe out of your skin. However, in deference to your rank, we have decided to allow you to choose the manner in which you die. The officer nods and replies, if you'll just bring me my sidearm and a single round, I'll take care of it for you. They do as he asks, and he shoots himself in the head. Next, the chief speaks to the naval officer, he gives him the same spiel. The officer explains that they were always a bit gun shy, but if the chief would provide some poison, he'd happily take it. The chief provides some poison and the naval officer offs himself. Finally, the chief visits the ranger. He explains the situation. The ranger thinks for a few seconds and replies, a fork. Excuse me, says the chief. Bring me a fork, the ranger says. Perplexed, the chief brought him a fork. Without a moment's hesitation, the ranger starts stabbing with the fork, all up and down his arms, on his legs, his torso, just stabbing like a madman. What are you doing? The chief asked. That has got to be the most painful way to die. The ranger looked up with a glint in his eye and shouts, fuck your canoe. <laughs> One fine day in Ireland, a guy is out golfing and gets up to the 16th hole. He tees up and cranks one. Unfortunately, it goes into the woods on the side of the fairway. He goes looking for his ball and comes across this little guy with this huge knot on his head and the golf ball lying right beside him. Goodness, says the golfer, and proceeds to revive the poor little guy. Upon awaking, the little guy says, well, you caught me fair and square. I am a leprechaun. I will grant you three wishes. The man says, I can't take anything from you. I'm just glad I didn't hurt you too badly and walks away. Watching the golfer depart, the leprechaun thinks, well, he was a nice enough guy and he did catch me. So I have to do something for him. 
I'll give him the three things that I would want. I'll give him unlimited money, a great golf game, and a great sex life. Well, a year goes past, and the same golfer is out golfing on the same course at the 16th hole. He gets up and hits one into the same woods and goes off, looking for his ball. When he finds the ball, he sees the same little guy and asks how he is doing. The leprechaun says, I'm fine, and might I ask how your golf game is? The golfer says, it's great, I hit under par every time. The leprechaun says, I did that for you, and might I ask how your money is holding out? The golfer says, well, now that you mention it, every time I put my hand in my pocket, I pull out a 10 pound note. The leprechaun smiles and says, I did that for you. And might I ask how your sex life is? The golfer looks at him a little shyly and says, well, maybe once or twice a week. The leprechaun is floored and stammers once or twice a week. The golfer, a little embarrassed, looks at him and says, well, that's not too bad for a Catholic priest in a small parish. <laughs> Two deaf people get married. During the first week of marriage, they find that they are unable to communicate in the bedroom when they turn off the lights because they can't see each other using sign language. After several nights of fumbling around and misunderstandings, the wife decides to find solution. Honey, she signs, why don't we agree on some simple signals? For instance, at night, if you want to have sex with me, reach over and squeeze my left breast one time. If you don't want to have sex, reach over and squeeze my right breast one time. The husband thinks this is a great idea and signs back to his wife. Great idea. Now if you want to have sex with me, reach over and pull on my penis one time. If you don't want to have sex, reach over and pull on my penis 50 times. <laughs> a mother and her young son were flying Southwest Airlines from Kansas City to Chicago. The son turned from the window to his mother and asked, if big dogs have baby dogs and big cats have baby cats, why don't big planes have baby planes? The mother said, well, maybe that's something you could ask the stewardess. So the boy asked the stewardess, if big dogs have baby dogs and big cats have baby cats, why don't big planes have baby planes? The stewardess responded, did your mother tell you to ask me? The boy admitted that this was the case. Well then, tell your mother that there are no baby planes because Southwest always pulls out on time. <laughs> a married man was having an affair with his secretary. One day, their passions overcame them in the office and they took off for her house. Exhausted from the afternoon's activities, they fell asleep and awoke at around 8 p.m. As the man threw on his clothes, he told the woman to take his shoes outside and rub them through the grass and dirt. Confused, she nonetheless complied and he slipped into his shoes and drove home. Where have you been? demanded his wife when he entered the house. Darling, replied the man, I can't lie to you. I've been having an affair with my secretary. I fell asleep in her bed and didn't wake up until eight o'clock. The wife glanced down at his shoes and said, you liar. You've been playing golf. <laughs> My friends, if you want to watch other funny jokes, subscribe to the channel.